Hi there, everybody. This is Chapter 1 of Price Analysis, a fundamental approach to the study of commodity prices. This chapter gives us a really general overview of the corn, soybeans, hard red winter wheat, hard red spring wheat, and soft red winter wheat markets. We'll cover some basics about when these things are planted, when they're harvested, and what are the major trends and themes that the markets will be worrying about as we move from one production season to the next. Let's talk about corn first. Corn is planted from the period of time around mid-March to May, and it's harvested from September to October. And a really important season for corn is the months of June and July when pollination occurs, and the crop levels will be really sensitive to the amount of rainfall and, and the temperature during that time period. So the most, the most volatile prep time for corn prices tends to be uh, during the summer months if we start to have a scare about be entering a drought type situation. Other than that, the market can worry about whether we're going to get the crop planted in a timely manner. And so if we have a really, really heavy spring during the months of March, so if we have a really, really heavy rainfall and a lot of wetness during the months of March to May, you can see prices rally as, as traders start to worry that farmers will shift a significant number of acres away from corn and towards other crops like soybeans or um, other things. Primarily though, it's all about the, the weather during the summer months. And once we've seen what kind of summer we're gonna have, there still is some residual uncertainty through the months of August and September because we have a decent idea whether we've had a good year or bad year in terms of weather, but there's still a lot of uncertainty, especially across geographic space, about whether maybe there was a pocket of dryness in Iowa and whether and how significant that problem would be in terms of reducing average yields. And so there's always some speculation about what final harvested yields are going to look like as we move into the fall season. That uncertainty starts to wane as we move from September to October because farmers start to get into the field and start to make some actual harvests and as those reports about what real live on the farm yields look like, then we start to resolve some of that uncertainty and the prices will, will tend to converge towards whatever their um, harvest time average should be. This figure shows us where corn is planted. We see here planted acres by county in um, some states that are important for corn production. You can see here very prominently what is affectionately termed as the corn belt. So min Southern Minnesota, Iowa, Illinois, Indiana, Ohio. And you can see significant production also occurring in um, the states of Wisconsin and Nebraska and the Eastern part of both Dakotas. So this is where the real action is in terms of, as I mentioned before, when we're watching weather conditions, those dark green counties are gonna be the primary places that we'll be watching for weather events to happen as we watch markets go throughout the growing season. As we skip down to figure one, this is taken directly from the USDA Economic Research Service, and it shows the number of planted acres since 1926 through 2016. Those are represented by the blue bars. Um, yield each year is plotted by the red line. So this chart shows that the United States has a long history of planting a significant number of acres to corn. There has been some variation around this um, over the last hundred years or so. In the 1920s and 1930s, it was common to plant more than 100 million acres of corn. As we moved into the 40s and 50s, we started to plant some soybeans with significant acres, and that's sort of reflected in this reduction in corn acres. Then you see a uptrend back towards 90 million acres since the mid 2000s, and that's been in response to ethanol policy that is mandated um, essentially corn-based ethanol to be used in the retail gasoline supply. So we've had to increase production of corn and that's been primarily accomplished through two factors. One, increases in yield, 
and two increases in the number of acres that we plant to corn. Every year there's a big debate and question about how many acres we're going to plant to corn relative to other commodities like soybeans and wheat. And the way those decisions are made is by independent farmers throughout the country looking at prices in the fall and into the spring and making preliminary decisions about acreage. If they, de if they decide they're going to plant X number of acres to corn versus soybeans, then they'll have to make arrangements to put some fertilizer down in the fall and then get inputs lined up for the spring. Because of the planning that's required, there's some fixity in those decisions in that if the economic incentives shift significantly from the fall to the spring when it's actually time to plant the crop, it's a little bit difficult to move, um, move those planned acres from one crop to another, but it's definitely not impossible. And as we move through February and March and even into April, a big debate in the markets is exactly how much acres of each commodity we're going to see planted. And usually corn and soybeans are most prominent in that discussion. That's because corn and soybeans are two of the most major crops. And in the Corn Belt, the, t the decision is typically between how many acres of corn and how many acres of soybeans am I going to plant on an individual farm. In some years, you can see a pretty significant shift in the profitability of expect and the expected profitability of corn versus soybeans occur during the sp springtime planting season and the markets uh, can respond to that in terms of expectations about how many acres we're going to get of each crop. Now let's shift our focus to the red line. The noticeable thing about the red line that is yields is that it's trending upward significantly year after year starting around oh the mid 40s we see a fairly linear looking trend so what caused that uh, what causes that increase in productivity year after year hybrid corn seeds were adopted by farmers in the 1930s and there's been increasing drought tolerance and increasing yields ever since the other notable feature about this line is that there's significant spikes downward those represent production shortfalls, mostly occurring due to drought years. The next figure, also from the Economic Research Service, shows what those production shortfalls can do to prices. Obviously, production and prices should be um, inversely related, and we see that reflected in this chart. This chart also comes from the Economic Research Service, and it shows where we put that production to use. You can see the main categories listed here are feed and residual use, alcohol for fuel use, otherwise known as ethanol, and food, seed, and other industrial uses. And obviously the category that jumps out at you in terms of growing over time is the alcohol for fuel use. You can see in the mid-2000s that amount of ethanol produced um, that's using up the corn production is just uh, expanding significantly over time. It's kind of steadied steadied off as we've moved into the latter, more recent years. 